This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Cajun. Cajun, we all know what a Cajun is. It's a great blend of spices that adds a little extra something to your weekend meals. I don't know that I know what a Cajun is. Well, it's a... (laughs) I know what a Cajun seasoning is. Well, there you go. It's essentially that. Uh, It's great on chicken, on your steaks, porks, fish. You name it, you put it on, and you got yourselves a great meal with the Cajun. If you want to go something more Southwest style, go with the Brits blend. The Brits blend is a Southwest blend seasoning. Um, It has some heat and some savory great for multiple different types of southwest different types of meals yep southwest yep your even tacos, goes on potato your salsa. salads yeah absolutely why not i think it goes on any yep. i i can southwest up anything yes absolutely check out all the seasonings over at the mad canadian bbq.com be sure to use the promo code sloopcast10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Private YouTube time. Hi, YouTube. Hey, you make a quick YouTube appearance? My dog's not here, so. He, He just wants butt scratches right now, so he's not hopping up. I'm out. That's poor planning on your part. It was. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right. I'm doing all right here, Jared. I got to watch some football I, this weekend. No. Mm-mm. Granted, it was high school football. No. I, I can't. I, and I know there was like college yeah. football on last night. I mean, it was two teams that are, I, I just can't. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to, if, if everyone's playing except the big 10, I know the PAC 12 isn't playing, but no one cares. If everyone's playing except the big 10, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know how I watch college football with no stakes, with no personal stakes. I can understand that. Yeah. It's, it, I think it's only going to serve to either make me angry or make me sad. I mean, that's, I, how can I, how can I watch, how can I watch the SEC or the ACC play football right now? You don't. Because in here, here's the thing. Can I, can I talk to the national media folk for a second? None, none, none of the national media folk listen to this podcast. I get that. But I, I know that a lot of the people who listen to this podcast also see national football media folk. And you, prob- you probably share this sentiment. So I hope this is relatable, even if it's not useful. Stop writing. Well, here's who you can cheer for if you're a Big Ten fan. Go to hell. I'm I'm not adopting Oklahoma or LSU. I, we kind of adopted LSU. That was that was a two-year rental program because of Joe Burrow. That's over now. Yep, I don't care about gone. LSU. I cared about Joe Burrow. What well, what am I supposed to do? I I'm not I'm not going to just sit back. I I rooted for it's like I'm a Lakers fan right now. Do I actually care about the Lakers? Not one even tiny little bit. I'm just cheering for LeBron. I cheered for the Cavs last year. I cheered for the Heat before that. I cheered for the Cavs before that. I'm I'm not I don't I don't I don't have any basketball loyalty. I cheered for LeBron. I don't have any SEC loyalties. I cheered for Joe Burrow. No Joe Burrow. I don't care about LSU anymore. It's really just that simple. So please Please 
Uh, Brawl says he's at work today. I was working all day today before this, so I, I feel you, Brawls. Um, stop writing articles telling a uh, Big Ten fans who they can cheer for now. Go to hell. I, maybe your intent is good. Maybe you're trying to troll us. Or maybe you're just stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't care. Just stop. I'm not going to become an Oklahoma fan this year. It's not going to happen. Yep. I'm, yep I'm, absolutely not. I've always been a Team Chaos fan, and I just hope everyone loses all the time. <laughs> That's it. I hope everyone loses. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone goes six and six, or whatever I, the I, number ends up being this year. I understand what you're coming at, but at the same time, like it's that time of the year. You got that itch to watch some football. I'll, I'll, to, I'll, I'll do the NFL to me. And thankfully, like I, I watched my hometown high school play Friday night, which that was, that was fun to see because of everything that's gone on with that, with the players playing right now. And I'll just go on a little spiel, spiel here. So the seniors for my high school who are playing right now, they were undefeated in basketball last spring. They didn't get to finish their season. And what could have been uh, state titles on the line there too. And then last fall, they do, were co- Do you feel comfortable were saying who? Like you might as well. Yeah, they, they were- they were co-conference champions last year. Did you say what high school it is? It's, it's Columbus Grove. They yeah. um they were co-conference champions last year, but it was such a tough um, division last year that even being a co-conference champion didn't even get you in to the playoffs last year. So they were hungry, and they looked pretty good. They looked pretty good for a division six. Is it six or seven? I forget. I forget how what divisions they are right now, but either way, smallest division right now in high school. I know in football, them... they have added a seventh division since okay, we graduated. So there are seven then. They're division seven then. And seeing a division seven school play, essentially it looks very similar type of offense that Coach Day runs. It's a spread offense. They really? get their receiver. Yeah. <laughs> they get their receivers out in space. And yeah, it was very entertaining to see, seeing them spread the ball out, which typically they were a wishbone type of offense in the past. When they won the state championship back in 2003, it was a, not necessarily wishbone, but a 85, 90%, no, 85, 90% just run. I mean, they... I mean, they ran for almost 400 yards in the state title game against uh, Mary Local that year. Yeah. All right, Kyle, we have a lot to get to. Mm -hmm. um, I just miss football. Yeah. <laughs> I do too, but I don't know what I don't know if I'm going to deal with the. Uh, I miss it. I want it. I think the emotional mm -hmm. cost of watching college football this year might be too much for me. Um. And by the way, I want to hear from you guys on something. And you can reach out to us on Twitter, on Facebook. No, not Facebook. We don't check Facebook. Um, email, sloopcast at gmail.com. Um, Twitter, that, those are going to be your best choices, uh, either Twitter or or Gmail. And, of course, our Discord folk know how to get a hold of us. They do it in the Discord. Um, do you want us picking games this year? Is that a thing you want us to do in, in the, if the scenario is the PAC 12, the ACC and the SEC are playing football and the PAC 12 and the big 10 aren't, do you want us just to be a national football show for those months? Is that a thing you want from us? I mean, if that's what you want from us, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Um, I, I mean, I'm due to a severe lack of content. Otherwise we might be forced to, but I'm curious, is that what you want? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good question. And one, one interesting thing too, about like what Nick Saban said 
over the week about like, well, if Big Ten and the Pac-12 play in January, that's pretty much going to be like a JV team, which to an extent, yeah, that would be true. You got I don't, all I don't the think NFL. you would get you would get the vast majority of players who are going to be round one, round two players, potentially round three, just would not play at, at all. But but then but then they, you see the news that came out this morning though, LSU star receiver Jamar Chase yeah, deciding to nope I'm not going to deal with it I'm going to save myself for for the um for the draft there I I, I th- is, is my, this year it's going to be a from everything I've read this has very little to do with COVID with Jamar Chase okay um and I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, well, not, 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 and it's one. I'm not saying anything illegal happened. I'm not saying he was go that he was or going to be suspended. I'm not. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm saying he's just opting out just cause. That that's it. I, I think LSU is going to be a mess this year, personally. But that's another topic for another day, maybe. Yeah. Well, so going back to what I was saying, so. Nick Saban saying, well, if they play in the spring, it's going to be JV, like a JV season or whatever. Well, this season here in general is shaping out to be essentially like a JV season too. You're seeing a lot of big names, not not a ton of them, but you're starting to see more and more bigger How names How many have we out. seen not from Big 12, Pac-12, or Big 10, Pac-12? I don't feel like it's been a ton. Um, there's been several from the Big Ten. Um, mm-hmm. rece- the really good receiver out of Minnesota has opted out. A couple Michigan players have opted out. Um, Micah Parsons in Penn State has opted out. I've seen a lot of big names in the Big Ten opt out. Um, and then obviously Jamar Chase opted out this mor- uh, yesterday for you guys. Um, out of LSU, I don't, and I don't know because I've just been so singularly focused on all of the crap happening in the Big Ten right now. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that I'm not saying it's not happening in the other in the Power Three conferences. I'm not saying it's not happening in the Power Three conferences. What I'm saying is that I don't know that it's happening as much there as it is in the other two. Fair point, fair point. But you do you are seeing more more players though opting out this year, whether it is for COVID or not, though. Right. Um. So we're talking about January. Um. There has been news or rumor is probably more accurate. Um. Mm-hmm. That a Thanksgiving. And by Thanksgiving, we're talking like starting on Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving plan being floated around. Um, according to some insiders on the Buckeye Scoop forum, and I'm, I, I think we had to play this game last week. I'm not. Gonna, I'm trying to only give away some of the bullet points because it's paywalled content, and I'm not trying to uh, piss off the bosses. Uh, but a lot of the conversation around Thanksgiving, a lot of that has to do with what the coaches and athletic directors are trying to push forward. Like it's, it's a a compromise being put forth by the coaches and the athletic directors to the presidents and Kevin Warren. Uh, the belief being that the presidents and Kevin Warren aren't going to budge all the way to the beginning of October the way that the Power 3 conferences are currently doing. And this Thanksgiving option is a as a compromise of sort. Somewhere in between January 1st and October 1st. Um... I'll be honest, it doesn't do anything for me because it's it's still 
too late to be a part of the national conversation. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not, no one's going to win any national awards, no Blitnikoffs, no Heismans. You're not involved in the playoff picture. You're not involved in, I don't think there's going to be much of a bowl season this year anyway, or any of a bowl season for that matter, other so than like how, the, the big six. So how are they really going to determine the top four teams from this year then? Like, you can't really compare schedules. You can't really compare wins and losses. They're always other than... just making it up anyway. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Aren't they always just made? Kyle, we went over this in our Every radical year. plan, in our radical plan to fix college football episode. There is no comparing schedules. Clemson got to backpedal into the playoff last year. Were they actually very good? Yeah, they were. They actually were very good. Did we actually know? Well, we assume that just because of the, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is amazing. And in college football, sometimes it is as simple as having an amazing quarterback. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not like the schedules are ever comparable, Kyle. You get, sometimes you get like one really good out of conference game in September. The teams are completely different teams by the time the playoffs are making their choices as evidenced by Ohio state's national championship team lose to Virginia tech, but then cream Oregon and Alabama. What is there to be learned? Uh, the playoff system's broken and it's not the playoff system's fault. It's college football's fault for not having any sort of unified scheduling. If you mm-hmm. want to hear me rant on about that or us rant on about that, go listen a few episodes back. Our radical chan- chain, our radical plan. Oh God, help me, Kyle. Tra- our radical plan to change college football episode. There you go. There you go. So right. let me, so I need to ask you this as far as Thanksgiving mm-hmm. goes. Yep. I'm jumping ahead in the notes a little bit. Mm-hmm. I've seen this argument on Twitter. I've seen this argument on the Buckeye Scoop message board. Um, I, I did not jump into... I'm going to try and pull this up. Some of it made it on camera. That's okay. Um, there's a forum post currently on the Buckeye Scoop message board. I've stayed out of the actual comments of it because... Eh. <laughs> but... Um, we have an upvote downvote system on the message board mm-hmm. and I've never seen this sort of controversy based purely on the upvotes and downvotes. A a Buckeye Scoop board member named Nuthouse Buck posted a thread and the thread's title is no shot at a natty equals no one cares. The upvote to downvote ratio is currently not ratio. Ratio is one to one, but the count is 25 to 25. And that based off of the numbers on the scoop board, because they don't feel like people do a lot of ups and downs of the actual thread themselves as much as they do the comments within the threads. Yeah. I've never seen such controversy on the board like I said, based purely on ups and downs. It's crazy. So Mm -hmm. the question I have to, I have to put forward to you, Kyle, because I think it's an incredibly valid question. That's dividing a lot of people. No shot at an Addy equals no one cares. What's I still care. I would still care. I think it was brought up a couple of times and I I tend to agree. Look at the the season before the national championship, 2012, Urban's first year there. How that season did not matter. It was a postseason ban, but yet they went 12 and 0. And how exciting of a season that was! I mean, we got to see we got to see Braxton Miller. I mean. My guy here, Braxton Miller. (laughs) 
we got to watch him his last year as a quarterback at Ohio State and just the amazing games that, that happened there. Yeah. No. Because his, his career as a quarterback ended in the Clemson bowl game. And since it was a bowl game, that's when he that's when he messed up his shoulder so bad that he basically was never a quarterback after that. And it was in a bowl game against Clemson. So not true, but let's move forward. That would have been his second year. First year was the was the six and six year with Luke Fickle. Second year was mm-hmm. the twelve and zero. The third year was his last year as a quarterback at Ohio State. Then he red shirts because he's injured. Is that right? You're right. Yep. You're right. Two thousand twelve. Yes. Or um no, no, I don't think he red. He didn't red shirt, no. but he. You, you are right. There was that. It's the two thousand. Yeah, two thousand twelve is when they went twelve and zero. Two thousand thirteen was his last year. Yeah. So, but either way, either way, getting we're getting many, lost in details that don't. How matter. many? How great of a season that was, even though. You no, know, he really did matter. because he got hurt. He was coming back to be the quarterback, but then got mm-hmm. hurt in training camp. Which is when JT Barrett took over. Yeah. Who yeah. was the second string quarterback. And let's not forget, 2012 is a year also when Ohio State played Purdue. Braxton Hurt got hurt. And here comes our favorite backup quarterback, Kenny G. Yeah. Ken- but uh, we're, we're, we're getting way too far away from the topic. I, I still would watch it. I still would. I'll care. watch it. I will I still watch it. Care. I will just, care. Just like I did, just like I did with the 2012 season, I still would care national title or not. Yeah, and that that was the question. It's like, does it matter? To me, it does. Yes. Okay. So from a purely binary standpoint, I agree with you. So if the if the options are yes and no, does it matter? Yes, it matters. On a on a more gradient scale, does it take a lot of the luster off? You have this team who you know damn well is a national title contender. Like we like to think that all of the Ohio State teams are national title contenders, but <laughs> this team especially is a national. I it's them and Clemson, I, and no one can change my mind about that. It is them, and, we'll, and it is Clemson. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, obviously, with you listen to a lot of our past episodes and even ones more recent, we're like, oh, we think that uh, <laughs> that other conferences are just eventually it's going to catch up to them and not play. Well, obviously, it seems like that they're going to just keep pushing forward and play no matter what. Maybe, but um, I'm, I'm not. But I just, I just don't see how. Like the biggest thing that everybody's pushing against here or is really hating is that oh big 10 is is delaying they're going to have no shot at the national title which goes back to what you've been saying a few times too about well there's going to be no bowl games well then how is there really going to be to determine who a national title um is who's going to be the the crown for the national champion then if there's going to be there'll be a playoff Will there be? I mean, there there might be, but with how things are going, I mean, we'll see though. If things but are is, bad is it, enough, is it going to be similar to like before the BCS, where where it's more of like claim championships and like oh they possible. got the AP here and they got another um, media award here. Could it be like that this year? I understand for how bizarre of a year 2020 is here. I I, I wouldn't blame, I wouldn't, it would not surprise me to see essentially two national titles this year, even though we'd like to have one. I I don't see it, Kyle. I know, know, but Um, I'm I'm just just throwing it out there. If the power three play, according to the schedule that they are currently working under, 
if, if that happens, the playoff committee will choose four playoff teams from those three conferences. There will be a playoff. Okay. And they will be the national titles, the national title holders. And the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are just going to have a little powwow over here. You know what? And initially, I'm going to say I could – what you just said there, I can reverse that too. As you, you said, can. it's Ohio – it's Ohio State and it's Clemson. Anybody else is, for what you just said, you, you don't care. Essentially, you got Clemson versus everybody else playing this fall, and then you have Ohio State playing everybody else in the late fall winter time. I, I don't see why you couldn't essentially have two champions this year, even though you like to have one. But in the past, though. There have been multiple claim championships in one year, though. It's not out of. Um, I could see it. I could see it happening this year because of the year that it is right now. You have three conferences. Then throw in Conference USA, who are very good they're not in the power five but they're absolutely number six there's no disputing that they're all playing something close to the actual schedule then you have just two conferences it's four against two realistically you're not going to convince me that the conference usa is that much worse than the pac-12 right now because outside of oregon you could say the same thing with the ACC too. So you could. The ACC is getting better, but it's still Clemson and then a big drop off from there. Yeah, you but can't the Pac-12 is that much worse. Me. The Pac-12 is that much worse. The it's just more obvious in the ACC because Clemson is there, yeah. showing off that difference. If USC was USC right now, we'd see how bad the Pac-12 is because they'd just be running over that entire conference. Mm -hmm. But either way, I, I'm i still going to stick to my guns here, whether you agree or not. I still think there is a – you have a national title for, for people who start on a semi-normal schedule – and then another champion down the road. Because another thing that they were talking about here, and I don't want to go too in depth here, it's what Jared mentioned before too. But there is talks about also a like a final game for uh, for the pack for the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, essentially being a champion versus the runner-up versus third and third place in each conference kind of facing each other in the two conferences so i mean essentially you got you got woohoo a big 10 pac-12 challenge we we've seen it and we all looked forward to it in the past as in the rose bowl in years past so yeah, I, except, I, I mean except I mean, this will be played in march after all of the other conferences after a national title winner has already been crowned after the Heisman's already been, of course the Heisman's already been given out again, again, normally anyway. I but. Again, I would really argue about, is that really a national champion when you don't, when it doesn't include whether we make fun of after Clemson you can make, wins you can the make, national make, title, you can make fun of the PAC 12 and, and we're all, we all can have a good time about making how bad, how bad the PAC 12 is though. But if you don't include Ohio state and Oregon in the discussion of, of the elites and have a chance to Oregon's win a national title, well, it's better than a lot of other teams too. Oregon's Oregon is good this year. And we were all they're looking good, forward to, we're all looking forward to that regular season game. I'm not going to convince me Oregon's any better than Wisconsin or Michigan or Penn state though. They're not, they're not up here. They're not Ohio state, Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU with Joe Burrow. They're, they're a good team, but they're, they're, they're clearly in that second tier with 
all of the other second tier programs like Texas and Michigan and Penn State. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's like still, James Franklin said a few years, you can be very good, but you have to take that next step to be elite. Mm -hmm. There's only a handful of elite programs in this country and Oregon's not there. Yeah, they're, they're not. But you know what? As you said, they're a very good team. And once in a while, they have a really good team. And I think this year, they have a really good team that would have really given Ohio State a run for their money. I still think Ohio State still would end up beating them, but still would give them a run for their money nonetheless, though. But the point I'm trying to get at is that, yes, you can argue about that, oh, the whoever the playoff committee chooses, and that's going to be the, the champion – I don't really fully agree with that because you're leaving out the contenders from the Big Ten, most likely Ohio State, and in the Pac-12 too. You're where leaving I, them out as well. Where I disagree with that is the playoff isn't leaving them out. The Big Ten left itself out. The Big Ten made the choice. The playoff did not make the choice. The Big Ten made the choice. Okay, so you I can't think, win think, a costume party that you didn't attend. Did you have the best costume in the closet? Maybe, but if you don't actually go to the costume party, you can't win the costume car party contest. And, and this go all goes back to what I originally was really trying to emphasize is that I think this year, I know we like to have one champion deter for every year, but this year. I argue that there could be a couple depending on the circumstances of how things play out and all that too. Let's say that the fall happens and then Clemson with one loss wins the national title. But then you have Ohio State who just looks just unbelievable, beats everybody in the Big Ten, beats uh, the champion of the Pac-12 handily like, like they did in Oregon a number of years ago. I don't see how you couldn't look back and be like, yeah, Ohio State is clearly the best team for that year, for that um, academic year. I don't know how you could just leave them out there based on based on how they did. You they leave them out because all of the polls wrapped up and went home two months ago. Why, why does it have to? It doesn't have to. What are you, you going to just do a co-champion? It's happened in the past. This is a abnormal year. Why not? It it just feels phony. Maybe I'm spoiled by having had the playoffs for the past mm -hmm. well, five, six that's years. Not, <laughs> we could argue about that with the claimed titles that Alabama has had well, over the that's, years, that's too. A, that's so. a whole other joke. So, but for being an abnormal year, I... Yeah, I, I'd say I'd say have you could have co champions. You'd have the fall champions and the winter champions. And Th then... does either Clemson or Ohio State feel good about that though? I think I think a lot. Of, I think the players themselves are just like I just want to go out and play. I know, but it's just it's what it's it's all phony. If Clemson wins a national title with no opportunity to compete with Ohio State. It's not a real national title. If Ohio State wins a national title with no real opportunity to compete against Clemson, mm -hmm. and that's why that's this a year fake national great. title. And that's why this year, no matter, and it's they just, the they, Big they Ten's just fault, just and then by proxy Ohio State's fault because they didn't show up to the party. Not Ohio State's fault. Please. I said it's the Big Ten's fault, and then by proxy Ohio State's fault. Okay. And that's why this year there's going to be a big old asterisk next to it. No matter if if what I would like happens or if it's just the um, the college play playoff happens and then the winner is selected from there to be the national title. The only or real champion. Hope. There's going to be an asterisk there. We've had a great debate here and I don't think we're changing each other's minds and I'm sure... According to everything I've seen, half the people are on your side and half the people are on my side. So we probably should move forward a bit here. Um, the only opportunity I see for a semi-normal football 
season this year would be if the Power Three, if if the if everyone the if the Big Ten moves up to Thanksgiving as a start date, and then the Pac-12 will follow along because it's just the Big Ten's dog. It's on the leash. It'll do. It'll follow the Big Ten and do what it tells it to do. Because that that's the reputation of the Pac-12 right now. Not only is that the public reputation of the Pac-12 right now, it's also true. It's one of those reputations that are earned and valid. The Pac-12 is just the Big Ten's dog. Let's be very clear about that. So if the Big Ten moves up to Thanksgiving, the Pac-12 will follow. Mm-hmm. Now, we see all sorts of schools in the ACC sending students home. Auburn, it, you have that stat, don't you? Yeah, Albert, Auburn's canceled the past three practices, so they haven't been practicing. Um, NC State's had football on hold for at least three days. It might be longer than that. It might be almost a week uh, that they haven't had football practice. They've actually moved their first game, which is like the second weekend in September, to the last weekend. So they've already moved a game already. And then UNC is getting back to playing, um, is getting back to um, to practice, but they decided to play without fans for at least the first month of September. So there's only one scenario that we get a legitimate football season based on what we're hearing from the Big Ten and based off of some of the news we're getting out of the ACC and the and the SEC. And we'll talk about that after we talk about our good friend, the Mad Canadian. How's that for a transition? That's a tease and a transition, you guys. Talk about our friend, the Mad Canadian. Let's see. First one to grab it off the shelf is a good one. I know, I think, Kyle, is this... Do you have a number one favorite? Do you have a focus camera? Is this is this your number one? Why won't the camera focus? It's the carry steak seasoning. <laughs> Stupid camera. You can't buy a decent yeah. camera during COVID. You can't buy a decent computer during COVID. And the Big Ten sucks. Sorry, that's way off topic. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely one of my favorite seasonings. To put it on, put it on hamburgers. You put it on, obviously, steak. Uh, it's it's a very versatile. Good on chicken too. Yeah, it's a very versatile seasoning. You're not sure if you want to support the Mad Canadian. You're not sure which seasoning. Start start with the carry steak. Other than the carry steak, if you're looking for a great starter, uh, the smoked is a great starter. That's the camera's still not focusing. I'm gonna stop trying. Uh, the Sonoran heat. I'm, I lied. I'm gonna try again. Focus. Mm-hmm. There it goes. Hey. The Sonoran, Sonoran heat. heat. This is a great do it all spice. It's a little bit spicy. It's not super spicy. It's a little bit spicy. If you want the super spicy, go with the Discord or the Four Horsemen. But this is just a great do it all, uh, salty, kind of spicy mix. Um, if you're looking for like a straight up pepper salt, you have two options. If you're looking for black pepper, there's the SMP Bud. Incredibly, like, I think maybe the most versatile of all of the Mad Canadian spices. It's salt, it's pepper. It's a lot more than that. It's not just salt and pepper in a bottle. It's a lot more than that, but it's an incredibly versatile spice. And then um, there's also the Mad Hatter. I blanked on the name for a second, which is salt, but it's a red pepper instead of a black pepper mix. Uh, there's also some citrus in there. Uh, that's one of my favorite thing to put on uh, chicken tenders. If I'm just throwing some ready-made chicken tenders in the air fryer. Uh-oh. I said it. I said air fryer. Oh, I'm going to hear for that one. I'm going I'm gonna, 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 gonna to get an angry email for that one. Um, you can. I So I throw some just some Kroger chicken strips in the air fryer. I will coat that in some in some Mad Hatter. It's, it's one of my go-tos. I'm already getting the angry email. I might as well just own it. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. You can get 10% off your entire order using the promo code SLOOPCAST10. That is SLOOPCAST10. You can find both that link and that promo code in the show notes underneath the master link. Uh, You can check out a bunch of our stuff there too, but this isn't our ad. It's his ad. 
So you can, uh, it's the madcanadianbbq.com or just uh, check the doobly do, hit that master link, and it's that and the promo code are in that master link. Uh, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, he's got your butts covered. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed our back and forth that first half. So let's cover what we actually have. <laughs> That's as close as we've got to an actual fight on this show <laughs> since like the black jerseys in season one. <laughs> All right. Let's get to what we we're going to discuss here. So Haskell Garrett uh, came came to the news Sunday morning that, ha- that Haskell Garrett was shot non-lethally, though, was shot Sunday morning. Yeah, um, we don't have a ton of solid details right now. We have a police report. We have a couple uh, items from uh, 10TV, um, from the Columbus Police Twitter account. We don't have a ton of details. Um, We were shot shortly after midnight on what is technically Sunday morning. Um, He should be fine. Uh, I, I think the early reports I saw say say that he was basically shot through the cheek, uh, and that that's that's the one in the in the face. I'm not trying to be funny, but I, I realize that that can mean two separate things. Um, but that he appears to, or at least he's appear to going to be fine. He's 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 in stable condition. Everything's okay. We meant to do that off the top of the show. Uh, I apologize for not doing that off the top of the show, and I thank Kyle for for catching us. We just sort of. Uh, naturally rolled into the conversation. So uh, we should have done that at the top of the show. Apologies for not doing it at the top of the show. Um, But we don't have a ton of details at this point. Honestly, by the time most of you are listening to this, you probably have more details than we do recording early on a Sunday. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's... So, no, no, I was going to just say, um, hope for a speedy recovery for for Haskell. even though it is, he's going to recover from this. You still want a speedy recover from him, and hopefully everything ends up fine for him. Yeah. So thoughts and prayers to him and his family. Yeah, and, and like we have no details about the circumstances surrounding the shoot. Mm-hmm. I, we, we we don't know. We don't we don't have information at this time. Yep. All right, uh, all right, cop. We are going to talk. We're going to go back to football now. Um, the one scenario in which I see a normal football season and how I am defining a normal football season. And, you know, it's going to be basically September here very shortly. And we don't have actual football with all due respect to Austin P and Al was Alabama state or Alabama something, whoever played last night. Um, we're not going to get real college football until the end of September at the earliest. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of the troubles taking place with COVID on ACC and SEC campuses. Um, I think there's been some stuff out of the PAC 12 is, or excuse me, out of the big 12 as well. Uh, I think Texas had a really bad outbreak if memory serves, but I don't have that in front of me. So I could be making that up. Point is, is that I think it's possible and this is just me speculating that we see and and honestly it might not even be speculation as much as it is hope um that we see the the power three conferences maybe also fall back to a september schedule or excuse me a end of november december schedule like is being proposed currently in the big 10 and probably the pac-12 you know woof woof dog Mm -hmm. and by the way like we we're not saying that the big 10 is absolutely going to be playing around thanksgiving that's not a that's not a given that's a that's a proposal that has a lot of support but not necessarily support from the people it absolutely needs support from at the moment that we are aware of point is is that it's at least possible and maybe this is again hopeful thinking maybe this is just me wanting this to be true that we see everyone start around that start time it makes a lot of sense because for a lot of campuses you're seeing a lot of the students go home 
from in that sort of post Thanksgiving all the way into January time frame of the year um, that, you know, sort of that winter break in between semesters. It's incredibly possible that, that we see, even if it's just PR nonsense, even if it's not true, you'll see the term bubble used. Well, the campus is empty. We'll be able to better put our players and staff and yada yada in a in a bubble. They'll they'll keep using that phrase from a PR standpoint because there's a lot of a positive association because of the success in the NBA right now. So they'll that's how they'll spin it. They'll say, well, we can do a bubble in. In November, December, we can do a bubble. We can do a bubble. They'll, you'll, they'll plaster you with that phrase. Point is, is that with all of the bad news, all the bad COVID news coming out of a lot of these campuses, who have a lot of whom are already sending their students home, that we we could potentially see everyone do that. And honestly, that's what I want personally more than anything out of all of this is for the Power Five commissioners. And by the way, this isn't happening and it's primarily Kevin Warren's fault. Fire Kevin Warren. I'm just, let me let me just say that real quick, everyone. Hashtag fire Kevin Warren. It's not the the conference commissioners aren't getting together because Kevin Warren just started making decisions unilaterally. He moved to a he moved to a um, conference only schedule. Just did it. There there was not conversation. There was not an agreement. That I just bumped the desk with my knee. With the other conference commissioners, he just he just did it. Then he did the same thing without even apparently a vote without even apparently communicating it down to the individual universities, just canceled the Big Ten football season. Without coordinating with anyone, and, the court, and like I said, according to some reports, not even taking a vote among the presidents, without communicating it to the athletic directors or the coaches, or God forbid, any of the players or parents, just sort of did it. So he's made enemies with literally everyone. The fire Kevin Warren tweets, by the way, are getting ears. I want everyone to know that. If you're out there on social media, and by the way, start writing letters. Start writing physical letters that start showing up at the Big Ten office. Actual physical mail that can create a pile. This is getting attention. He's making enemies with literally everyone. I'm not saying we're going to get him fired per se, because I don't necessarily see that happening just because of the PR nightmare, <laughs> you know, because that would be new. Um, it's, it's a mess in the Big Ten right now, and he's making enemies not only within the conference, but he's made enemies with all the other conferences because he's just been unilaterally making decisions because he thought that everyone was going to put him up on a pedestal and, and clap for him for, for taking the lead and making the tough decision and putting health for, and he thought he was going to be hot shit, show up new guy on the job, making decisions, making the right decisions. And he thought he's going to put up, be put up on a pedestal and he thought he was going to be the next NFL commissioner. This was the career path he ha had in mind. He's using the big 10 as a stepping stone. He's been gung ho doing shit without talking to anyone, without doing anything because he thought he was going to be positively received. Not because he thought it was the right thing because he's ambitious and he wants to be the next NFL commissioner. I'm not saying we can get him fired from the Big Ten, but we can send a very clear message that he sucks and that standing in opposition of him will garner friends of the Big Ten presidents and athletic directors and coaches. He is our enemy, first and foremost. And I'm not sugarcoating any of this. This is as blunt as I've been on this show for a long time. Continue tweeting fire Kevin Warren. 
start sending actual physical mail to the Big Ten offices. Start sending actual physical mail to your president's office at whatever. You're all Ohio State fans. You know what I'm. But actual physical mail, people. Actual physical mail that can create piles that people have to look at and deal with. Not phone calls that go to an answering service, not tweets that go unread, actual physical mail. Anyway, I got off on a not, thing there, Kyle. Not yet. I don't think. Well, you were, you were saying that we're not going to get Kevin uh, Kevin Warren fired. And I just want to I just want to put in at the end of that. Not yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm he'll first off, he won't get fired. If it actually comes down to it, he'll resign. Mm -hmm. That that's yeah. that that's just the reality of how these things work. Um mm -hmm. but but don't don't get discouraged. This Thanksgiving plan shouldn't be a relief for you. This should piss you off. Because this is them admitting a mistake without doing the right thing and actually putting it where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And there's even rumors going out there right now that I know you mentioned earlier that that the presidents have told the AD that October isn't going to happen. But there are rumors going out there that it's not really out of the possibility yet. I'm not, yeah, that, but I'm not willing to put hope there yet. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not just, putting a lot of hope in Thanksgiving either. I have a fair amount of hope in Thanksgiving. Um once again, I think that was being floated, not by the actual decision makers. I think that was being leaked to the press by people at Nebraska and Ohio State and Penn State and the universities that are really leading the charge in order to get this situation remedied. Mm -hmm. um, this is not coming from the president's. It is not coming from Kevin Warren. But what I want to put out there is that Thanksgiving is not good enough. Despite the argument that Kyle and I just had about how much does a season that starts months after the rest of the teams that actually matter, how much does that actually matter and actually count for? And we already had that argument. We're not going to go over that again. But the point is, is that even though Kyle is on the side of that season mattering more than me, I think I can speak for Kyle in saying that his preference would be that they that Ohio State and the Big Ten start at the end of October with everybody else. Or excuse me, the beginning of October with everyone else. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, I, Agreed. I don't think I was. I don't think I was going on a limb speaking for Kyle on mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. All right. Let's move into Saturday morning. So last Saturday morning, parents, media, and fans came out to the front of Ohio Stadium to listen to different parents speak, give their thoughts and their Oops. expression toward the Big Ten and trying to stick with me, YouTubers. That. Sorry, Kyle, you keep talking. I just messed up the whole YouTube thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that the parents just came out and talked about just the big 10, just trying to be transparent in their decision and why they came to that decision, not necessarily come in to argue about them canceling season, but why, what made them come to the decision to cancel it too. And what, what the teams and universities need to do moving forward to keep the players safe too. I mean, you see, I don't think it's really related to um, Ohio State football being canceled, but are we going to see more of a trend where, like, Haskell Garrett having an incident Sunday Sunday morning too? Are we going to see more of that, or even players catching the virus because they're not being with the team, being tested, and all that too? Is there going to be is there something put in place to help help these players out? Now that is canceled. Can can you repeat that repeat that last sentence? You you messed up a little bit. At least on the video. I think we we record the audio on Kyle's side, so you probably sound fine on the podcast audio, but for our YouTube listeners, can you repeat what you just said for me? Just that last sentence. With 
for everything that's going on and that like the season's canceled right now like is there something put in place to protect the players like do they have a plan to help protect these players take care of the players and to to do testing to make sure that they're fine now that they're in campus right now at Ohio around St- other other uh, with other students as well too. Ohio State has done a really good job making sure the best they can and of course we're talking about kids in their early 20s still living on or near campus. Ohio State can only do so much. Mm-hmm. But Ohio State has legitimately done everything in their power even with the season being canceled to keep these players as safe from the virus as possible. That being said, and to aid to your point, Kyle, are the players being as careful as they should be, or are they feeling demotivated? Because in the same way the fan base, in the same way you and I, Kyle, are split on how much this season might actually matter, there's probably some split among the players as well. How serious are you taking this season if you can't compete for a national? You don't come to Ohio State to win the Big Ten. Sorry. Maybe that's the goal at Michigan. Maybe that's the goal at Wisconsin. Winning the Big Ten is a stepping stone to your actual goals at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's just to even believe that a season is going to happen because at this point, the season's canceled. Until yeah. I hear otherwise, until I see that, hey, we have a plan of making sure that the athletes are safe, that we have a schedule and we have the proper protocol procedures put in place to have a season. None of that's been communicated. So at no, this point, there's season, no communication. Is, season is canceled at yeah. this point. Yeah. Well, until let's, I hear otherwise. Well, and let's, let's reiterate, we keep talking about January 1. That's been put out there by Ryan Day. And of course, a lot of reports have come out saying that that is a popular sentiment among the Big Ten. But by the way, that has that's not a that's not a confirmed thing. That's not a that's not a guaranteed thing because we've not heard that from the Big Ten. In fact, we have heard a grand total of shit from the Big Ten. We essentially got an announcement that the season was canceled, a couple interviews with Kevin Warren in which he evades all the questions asked to him, and then a letter that was essentially a sorry that you feel upset apology, a non-apology, a double speak apology. I'm sorry that you're upset. That that gem of a non-apology apology. Mm-hmm. That's what we've got from Kevin Warren so far. Everything yeah. else, literally 100% of anything else you have heard is rumor. January seasons, March seasons, Thanksgiving seasons. It's all rumor and nonsense. It's um, just like a lot of it's just like a lot of um workplaces such as the place that I work at in real life that the talk is like, yeah, we're going to we're going to stay in a work from home aka canceled season and football stance here we're gonna we're gonna do that and we'll we'll reevaluate at the beginning of the year that's that's essentially how it is to me right um now in a workplace that's that's fine because we can still do at least you and i can we can still do our we can do our jobs from home just as good if not better from home um but you know that obviously is not the case with football (laughs) Yeah. yeah so Let's get back into uh, Saturday morning. You, you, Jared, yeah, were there in attendance to listen in and all that. So let's let's hear from you. What you picked up, what what you thought about the attendance, and what some of the parents said. So what's some of the key things you took away? Uh, attendance was pretty good. Um, I was standing towards the front, so I didn't necessarily have um, a great view of how deep the the attendance went. But the attendance was pretty good. Um, we heard from a lot of the parents. Um, I thought Amanda Bob um, was who is the current president of the uh, the family unit for the Ohio State football team. Um, 
she's had a, she had a lot of great things to say. Um, a lot of the things I just said about you know there being rumors and no facts and just hearsay. A lot of what I was saying right there, I was stealing straight from her. <laughs> so, um, a lot of that I'm stealing straight from from Amanda on that one. Uh, she spoke and she was excellent. Um, of course, um, Randy Wade was there. Uh, he was the first to speak. Um, he and Amanda are the de facto leaders of this movement, I would say. Um Oh, uh, Amanda's probably more than a de facto leader as she is the president of the of the family association. But but Randy Wade has absolutely taken up uh, a leadership position with with all of this. Um, he was there and he was great. I don't necessarily feel like he was super prepared to speak to the media when he went to Chicago last week. Uh, speaking of Randy Wade. Um, this week he was a lot more prepared. Um, I, I thought he was making some excellent points. I thought he did a really good job telling a story. You know, your second time doing something, talking to the media, your second time doing something's always going to be a lot better than your first time doing something. And again, these aren't media trained people. These are parents protesting. You know, this is, mm-hmm. which is why we once again have to ask, where is Kevin Warren? You're, you're, you're actually paid a lot of freaking money. I almost said it. A lot of money to, to answer to the press and to speak on camera. Where are you? Kevin Warren, where are you? He's still, he's still in his office with all of his pictures yeah. behind him. I don't want to talk about any more about Kevin Warren. Um, and then uh, G. Let's Scott. Talk, let's talk. Yep. Let's G, talk about G. Scott, probably the person that a lot G. Scott of are Senior, about. Um, obviously the father of G. Scott Junior, uh, Ohio State's freshman wide receiver. Uh, if you do not know, he is a radio host in the state of Washington, um, and that that that's apparent because yes. again, <laughs> and when I say apparent, that that's one word. He's it's apparent that this parent. Uh, is used to speaking with a microphone. Again, uh, the second time you do something is always going to be a lot better than the first time. And Mr. Scott is, uh, this is not his first or his second time with a microphone in his hand. And that was obvious. Um, Telling a great story, uh, giving great questions to reporters after all of the speeches, because first they did a bunch of speeches where they stood up in front of all the cameras and talked. And and then there was a bit of a media scrum afterwards. Um, with all due respect to Randy Wade and Amanda and a lot of the other people who had a lot of great things to say, it was in fact the uh, G Scott show. Um, he's very good with a microphone in his hand and in his face. And that's, that's obvious. Um, but also you had a lot of great points to not, not just a good speaker, not just a good storyteller, but also because he's used to doing like sports debate on radio, really good at, sort of focusing his points and, and communicating. Um, G Scott senior says, here's a, here's a good quote. I don't like that. It's being floated around. I don't like anything about anything floating around. And he's talking about, you know, when's the season going to happen? I want the decision and I want the commissioner, the same person who yanked the season away that yanked the goalpost away. I want that to be the person that comes out and brings it out. I don't want any more speculations. I don't want any, I don't want what people are hearing, what they're saying. I want to hear directly from Kevin Warren. Simple. Simple. (laughs) It should be. It should should be. be, Mr. Scott. It really should be. He goes on, he goes, all this speculation, who does it help? It doesn't help anyone. You're hearing Mm -hmm. spring. You're hearing January. You're hearing November. Why are we speculating about this? Why? I'll tell you what we wouldn't be speculating about. I bet if somebody bought my son a plane ticket and that was illegally done, how fast would I hear from the Big Ten then? You wouldn't hear from the Big Ten. You'd hear from the NCAA as, as a moment of quick correction, which also still begs the question, 
Where the hell is the NCAA in making any of this happen? We talk about the conference commissioners not getting together, and we talk about all of this miscommunication and lack of coordination. If only there was some sort of National Association of College Athletics. I messed it up a little bit, but you know what I'm saying. Let's insert episode a few weeks ago right here. Yeah. We're done with the NCAA. We're done with conferences. We're done. We have to just make this a semi-pro league, guys. The model doesn't work. COVID has not broke the model. It has simply revealed the model of current mm. college football as a thing that doesn't work. Yep. You took college football, which was great. Then you added money to it, which is great. But you add two good things together, and it has not made a better thing. It has made a good thing broken. And we have to adapt because we're not giving the money back. That's not happening. We can ask We can ask all the conferences and all the athletic departments if they want to give the money back. It's not going to happen. So how do we have football with money? And if you want the answer to that question, go listen a few weeks back. A radical plan to fix college football. That's not our... I haven't looked at our stats in weeks. That needs to be our most downloaded episode ever as much as we pluck it. It was good. And Jared put a lot of time and effort into writing that. And I thought it was really well done. Definitely check it out. If you haven't listened already, or if you're really interested in getting mostly Jared's idea of uh, how to... Listen, I may Jared's. have... I may have written it, but there was a lot of your ideas in there. So I appreciate the praise you're giving me, <laughs> but there's a lot of your influence in there, even if I'm the one who actually wrote it. Our general thoughts <laughs> about how to fix college football. And it's and we put in there radical. It's it's, not, a, radi- it's, it's a radical change, but it's not just a small change, kind of no. like what change from the BCS to to the playoff system. It's a, it's a, we're breaking this wheel. Yeah. And we're creating a new one. Yeah, absolutely. Break the wheel. Go listen to that episode. All right, Jared, a couple of quick, couple of ask Sloopcast questions and we'll go ahead and end the show here. First one from our good friend and sponsor of today's episode, the mad Canadian mad Canadian asks us, Jared, Mm Mm-hmm what's your favorite type of meat red white or blue i mean fish it could be a blue snapper good yeah Yeah. but i'm sticking with the red i know i just might be just me growing up whatever but i definitely like more of the red meat doesn't mean that i don't like white at all uh but if you give me an option between red or white most of the time I'll probably pick red. I prefer red meat. Beef probably is is what we yeah. talk about most often when we talk about red meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prefer that, but the reality of the situation is that I eat a lot more chicken. If I had to give up one, yes. I would have to give up beef, but I do prefer mm-hmm. it. Um, it has to do a lot with health and expense mostly. Chicken's yes. a lot healthier and chicken's a, a lot cheaper. <laughs> so correct <laughs> i eat a lot more chicken um so i would miss chicken my, my 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 diet would have to be changed radically if i had to stop eating chicken yep. my diet would not change that radically if i had to stop eating mm-hmm. red meat yeah all right question by the way pork Duncan. pork is in the conversation with white meat as well you know i don't want to give up pork either you want to give up bacon Hmm. That's a very good point. Hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next one. Duncan from the Discord. Who would win the award for because that one thing happened? Um, Tony Gerdeman actually had a really great article. I want to say maybe probably about a week ago. I think it may have been last Monday um, about you know, a practice that happened at Ohio state one day. And that one day being the day that Joe Burrow got hurt, which put him behind in the race that he was in with Haskins that he lost 
that ends up leading his leading to his transfer to LSU, which leads to a national title for LSU. But then, you know, what happens if Burrow doesn't get hurt and Burrow, you know, go, go read the Tony Gerdeman article. Um, that That's a huge thing. And most recent, and I get a chance to, to, to plug something from my, my man, Tony Gerdeman. Mm-hmm. Or another one, if you want to go more Ohio State specific, not saying Joe Burrow is in Ohio State. It's but, kind of an LSU story as much yeah. as it is Ohio State story. You could go with the JT injury and then input J. Wow, <laughs> I'm I'm draw, I'm drawing. You almost went you almost went JT Barrett right back into JT Barrett I, instead of I saying did, JT yeah. Barrett into Cardell Jones. Yes, Cardale Jones. JT Barrett going down and Cardale Jones going in. Yeah. Definitely another big one there. Or even before that. What if Teddy yeah. Ginn doesn't get hurt returning the kickoff mm-hmm. in the national championship game against Florida? Um, or, maybe or not a Ohio lot State. because as I like to re- remind people when they say, well, maybe Ohio State wins if Teddy Ginn doesn't get hurt. To which I'd like to point out that Teddy Ginn didn't play defense. Yeah. Or then, if you want to go back even further, you can go back to Claret before two. And we can just say Claret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we'll just move on to the next question. Yeah. Uh, last question here from our homie Sun Card. What are the, well, we already kind of answered this already, but he asks, what are the timelines associated with January 1st start and Thanksgiving start? Can I, can I real quick jump back to the other question? <laughs> okay. What if. And this is, this is a big one. What if Trestle doesn't forward an email or doesn't receive an email or did the right thing and reported the information that he received in an email about everything going on with Trell Pryor? Mm-hmm. If Jim Trestle either never gets that information and all of that stuff sort of gets swept under the rug. Or if you go, well, because his firing leads to Trell Pryor's <laughs> reputation at Ohio State being trashed. We don't talk about uh, we do not talk about enough how great Trell Pryor was at Ohio State because we don't like to talk about that whole situation. Fact of the matter is he was special. Yeah, and, and then that also just leads you know you you start pulling that thread, the fact that pulling the thread on the sweater vest, the fact that. Trestle leaves opens the door for urban Meyer to come in. And I am of the belief and I'm about to say something bad about Jim Trestle and I'm bearing myself. I'm protecting myself for impact on this one. I think he was kind of done. I, I kind of, we kind of saw that, that, that next year. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or if you want to, or if you want to pull the bandaid out of the wound that still is with the house state, um, fans right now what if JK wasn't hurt and Sean Wade wasn't ejected yep All right. I, I, I'm kind of the belief that LSU was unstoppable last year but it still would have been really nice to beat Clemson yes um, Sun Card's question timeline associated with January 1st start and Thanksgiving start it just more or less Ending in March versus ending in April, essentially. Yeah, um, the the no- I say that the November start pisses me off more than they did it in January because it's them correcting a mistake, but not correcting the mistake correctly. I will say, but it do- is better. It's better for the players because if they do it in November, then you have a higher probability of Sean Wade playing and Justin Fields and all of the players who we want to see play another season. We have a much higher probability of them actually playing. I will say, though, Jerry, if they do a Thanksgiving start week one, just so things look like or feel like things haven't changed week one, Ohio State, Michigan. That's weird because now you're start you're, you're playing on the traditional weekend, but it's now the first. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna have to leave that one go as we are going way over. Um, 
Kyle, I think that's the end of the show. Um, want to encourage everyone to check out all the stuff. You can check out the master link, all the good stuff's in there. Uh, you can check out our t-shirt store where you can buy one of these. Kyle, what do you think of this one? I like it. It says, take me home. The Buckeye sloop cast with so it's the just like, it's just like our song. of the state of Ohio. It's just like our song. And you can get this in literally any color. You can get it in blue if you want to get it in blue. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. They're they're all custom made, custom print, so you can get it in what. So you can get the red one if you like the red one. I wouldn't recommend black. That's that's just you can get it if that's what you want. You can buy this shirt in black. I wouldn't recommend it. YouTube you, YouTube folk get why that's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can check out uh, our Sloopcast store, which has over forty designs in it. You can check out our seventy seventy one store. Uh, I actually just made a, a big a new series of shirts in the 7071 store that are all old Ohio professional football teams. So like the Akron pros, the Ironton tanks, the Canton bulldogs. I don't know how many people know this. The NFL basically started in large part around the old Ohio league. The NFL was once headquartered in Columbus, Ohio the NFL was once made up of mostly teams from Ohio. Um, so there's a bunch of defunct old NFL franchises from the state of Ohio. Um, and you can go buy something that looks a lot, in some cases, just like their old merch. In some other cases, I couldn't, they'd like the old pictures don't exist. So I had to be a little bit creative. Uh, but you can go check out all that stuff uh, over on the 7071 store. And of course, that link and all the other links uh, can be found in the master link and you can find the master link where Kyle in the doobly do anything yes, in Kyle's sir. corner. I'm just going to say no, just because that's we're fine. Way over on that, time. You know what? Not only is that fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That brings us uh, to the end of the show. I have not picked out a band because I am bad at my job very bad at my job Kyle um, yeah dinger you, you missed all right we're almost done buddy <laughs> uh music music Kyle help me out here just say something just say something that might jog my head dogs dogs. Um, I don't know why, but you said dogs and maybe I was already primed to do it because of this sort of being a, um, sort of being a black keys thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not legally. It's not okay. This is legally not a black keys t-shirt. It's not, it's only three words. You can't copyright Well, you can, but they didn't copyright three words. Okay. It might be based off of this theme song, but it is not legally I mean, speaking. Ohio, I mean, Ohio State can't even copyright one. Well, I feel like there may be three times as likely, but I also feel like they didn't invent the phrase "take me home" any more than Ohio State invented the word "the." Yep. Yep. Which, by the way, you can buy a uh, you can buy a the or a the shirt in the Sloopcast store. That that's an I like that design a lot. I don't feel like enough of you buy that one. I like that design a whole lot. Kyle, I'm I'm so yeah. We're doing the Black Keys tonight. Uh, you have to listen to the actual podcast version to to hear the ending music. But we'll do a full Black Keys song instead of just the little snippet that we normally do at the top of the show. Uh, and YouTubers, you and I are about to have a private conversation. But for the podcast listeners. Uh, I want to say that I'd like to encourage you to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. This is once again, the Akron's very own, the Black Keys. Hi, YouTubers. I have to give myself a little, little bit of space <laughs> to, to edit. Just a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. Yep. <sighs> we didn't, we barely touched our show notes. That this, you want to peek behind the curtain, YouTubers? We barely touched the show notes. Kyle and I got off. That, that argument we had was like one little line in the show notes. But I thought it was good, so we rolled with it. One line. It was seriously like, does a season without national goals matter? 
We have welcome pages. To, welcome, welcome to the extended wasteland. wasteland. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we have pages of notes, and we spent more than half of the show on a single bullet yep. point. Yep. But I thought it was good, so we rolled with it. All right, that's enough of this. Uh, time to end the show. I'd like to once again thank the Black Keys for ending today's show and uh, maybe copyright claiming us and, and getting our podcast taken down. Please don't do that. Y'all are cool. I like you. Uh, <laughs> I always get a little bit nervous when I do the big bands. I don't even try and do 21 Pilots because I, I, I got into a scrap with, not them, but with, you know what? We're talking about the Mad Canadian. Mad, this episode brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Let's see. We talked about the Kerry Steak. Focus, focus. There we go. The Kerry Steak. Uh, we talked about the Cajun. We talked about the Brits blend. We talked about the smoked. Uh, Kyle, I've left too many of the seasonings actually in my kitchen. If you want any evidence, by the way, and this is especially for the YouTube listeners, uh, a few episodes back, I had this entire thing over here just filled with Mad Canadian spices. And um, I've been slowly moving them back to the kitchen and forgetting to bring them back in. Um, so I don't have a... Oh, we have not talked about Kyle. Oh, I'm still blurry. Camera. There we go. Uh, we have not talked about yet the savory or the coffee and cue. Uh, savory is great for pulled pork, pulled chicken... Um, if you're pulling something, savory is your way, is absolutely your way in. Um, coffee and Q. I think he has this listed under the, under the pork rubs. He, he has them listed all, all over the place, I'm sure. But my favorite thing I've ever done with the coffee and Q, uh, was with, um, I think it was a flank steak. So that was pretty dope. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I really liked it on the flank steak, put it on the grill. Um, you're going to want this to be maybe more of a lunch thing. If you're, if you're, <laughs> if you're sensitive to caffeine, this might be more of a lunch thing than a dinner thing. Cause it has actual coffee in it. So that, that's a fair warning from me to you. This isn't like coffee flavoring. This isn't Kahlua or whatever, where they put artificial coffee, actual coffee in here, actual coffee in that coffee and cube. So if you're if you're caffeine sensitive, that might be uh, for your lunchtime burger as opposed to your midnight snack. That's just that's a fair that's a fair warning for me to you. But all of this and a lot more, including is it three or four? I've, I've blanked. Is it three new spices coming out? Mm -hmm. Three new spices coming out shortly. One of them's pumpkin spice. The other one is some sort of Italian blend. And there's uh, one that did, oh what did he end up calling that? Did he end up calling it Mommy Bay? I, I might be wrong about the name, but it's it's based off of the old bay seasoning. So if you like that old bay, but you wanna you want like a homemade natural version of it as opposed to the junk that they mass produce, you can check out some old bay inspired. That's, I'm gonna say old bay inspired, in the same way that this shirt is only inspired by the black keys. <laughs> Old Bay inspired seasoning that's coming to you. Uh, I think probably maybe within a week or two. I think it's it's coming real real soon. Those three spices. And by the way, I just want to say I am Team Pumpkin Spice, and I'm tired of you unfunny people continuing to make jokes about it being basic or whatever. It's good. It's cinnamon. It's nutmeg. It's delicious. Stop acting like you're too good for pumpkin spice just because it's a joke that goes around on the internet. You know what else? I like pineapple on my pizza. If you don't like it. I almost flipped you off. Then I made a gun signal instead, which is, I don't know if that's much better, honestly. But all of this and more can be found in the doobly-doo, as well as uh, the madcanadianbbq.com. 10% off your entire order. Go to the madcanadianbbq.com. Promo code SLOOPCAST10 is your promo code. Promo code SLOOPCAST10. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. He has your butts covered.